Hi, this is Ibari and X from The Candid Frame, and this week I thought I'd talk about hands. Uh, we have a lot of photographs of people in here, so that typically means that we have a lot of faces, a lot of bodies, uh, people doing things, or um, their portraits of, of people. And one of the most interesting things I sometimes find uh, of a subject is their hands. There's either something that looks really interesting about their hands or they're doing something really interesting with their hands. And it's something that many of us don't photograph a lot, even though we use our hands constantly, not only to do things, but to express things. And sometimes I feel like the hands can be a, a means of being able to express something about someone in a way that's much more interesting than just simply showing their face or their clothing. So I chose a few images here to sort of highlight uh, what I thought were really good images of people's hands. So we're just going to jump right into it. Um, here's a image by Linda Sue Coxis. And it is uh, of a musician playing uh, these these drums, these bongos. And I really liked uh, the, the, the shot. The, the color in and of itself is really, really interesting. Uh, and that, I think, was the first initial draw for me. But I like how the hand seemed to come out of this sort of inky blackness um, to, to you know, pound on these drums. And I like the fact that the, the hands aren't exactly tack sharp. I like that there's a little blur to them, which indicates some of the energy and the motion and the dynamism that's happening within the, within the scene. Um, it looks like she may have affected some of this uh, blackness in, in Photoshop, but, you know, it's, it's not a distraction for me at all. I think... Uh, you know, she obviously had a vision for this photograph, and it really works well here. Um, we often photograph musicians performing, and, and oftentimes you're trying to get their facial expressions. But there are certain performers um, that get so expressive with their hands that sometimes it's really good to just go in and, and focus on just the hands, as well as the overall shot that shows the person's face, their body, and even the scene uh, that they're in. Uh, whenever I'm shooting musicians, I'm always trying to find an opportunity to focus on, on the hands to help, to help complete the story. Uh, here's an image by uh, Jeff Valancourt of a of a guy, uh, a, a shoe shineman, and I've made a, a a good number of of images of people shining shoes. My dad used to shine shoes when he was a kid back in the Dominican Republic, so I've always gravitated to that, to that subject matter. But what I find interesting about this shot is not just the fact that this these hands are occupied with something. Um, if you take a look at the hands, they are really they really tell the story on in and of themselves. We've got some great color here. Granted, we got that yellow that contrasts beautifully with the blues in the overall frame. But th those hands, you take a look at the details in those hands, and you're just going, wow. You know, this guy has been doing this for a long, long time. Cause, and his hands show it. And I, I like the gesture here. I like the way that the lines of the hands uh, sort of lead us right to the boot, which ends up being, you know, the really center point of the entire shot. But I think it's the hands themselves that really get to express something here. Um, you know, you have the, the color of the hands, the texture, uh, the sharpness here, all of it really conveys a, a really interesting moment, but it really gives us an insight into, into who this person is, even though we don't get the opportunity to see his face in this, in this particular photograph. Uh, this is an image by Robert Larson, um, and this is a series he's been doing on a group of friends uh, that he's uh, gone to school with and who he's partied with for a number of years. And uh, this is uh, a, a sort of a big transitional time for, for these people who are in their early to, to mid-20s. And they're now sort of transitioning from that time of their young adulthood into, you know, uh, going off to find work somewhere else, uh, starting families, and, and so on and so forth. And this is sort of a, a, a way of documenting that last, that last time where many of these people will be together on a, on a regular basis. Uh, it's a wonderful series. I, I interviewed Robert for my podcast several years ago, 
and uh, he's been working on a variety of personal projects since then. Uh, but this latest one is, is really, really fascinating, and I recommend that you check it out. But I really love this shot here where this where these friends are together on this on this hammock, and I love the fact that we don't see their faces. There's an intimacy that's revealed in this shot um, just by the tangle of limbs and, and the hands, and it, it, it conveys so much about who these people are in relationship to each other. And uh, it's just a, a really beautiful and striking shot. I love the presence of the boots there, the the T-shirt with the American flag, the way these these stripes from the hammock sort of lead the eye towards the center of the frame, and you get all these these lines that are created by the legs, the arms, the hands, um, all that bring us down to the center of the frame. But it's just the there's a tenderness to the shot that I I think is really remarkable, and it, it's really the result of the framing, but especially you know, the placement of the hands um, within in the frame. I think it's a, a wonderful, wonderful shot. And I'm glad that it emphasizes the, the hands because I think if this included uh, the faces, our experience of the shot would be much more focused on what these people look like rather than what's being expressed in, in this photograph. Uh, here's a shot by Ronnie Olson. And uh, the, the, I love the gesture here of... The hands pulling on on the fingers. You know, a couple of videos past we talked about the concept of gesture, looking for that little telltale sign of of something special that takes an ordinary shot and makes it exceptional. So, you know, we make a lot of photographs of people from behind, but there isn't necessarily anything interesting happening. Um, in this case. What's happening here is just that that pulling of the finger that seems to be like some anxiety, some tension, some awkwardness that's happening. It, it doesn't tell the complete story of what's happening, but whenever I see that that particular gesture, it, it kind of suggests a, a certain level of discomfort. And uh, I really get that in this shot. I want to know more. I want to know who this person is and what the circumstances are. Uh, you only get hints of it within the frame. I don't completely have a sense of where we are. There's some text here, but still, even with that, I really don't get a sense of what's happening here. But uh, I'm still captivated by that gesture, and it's a very simple one, but it really makes this photograph, because imagine if this person's hands were just hanging at their side. The shot wouldn't be as interesting. The focus would be more the, the three and the lettering here, but not necessarily what's happening here with the hands. And, and it's, it's a... It's a good example of how if you see something very interesting happening with the hands, that sometimes that can be the, the focal point of, of the photograph. Here's a shot uh, uh, by Matt uh, Nelson, and uh, he photographed uh, these women with uh, henna uh, uh, painting on their hands and arms, and I just thought it was really kind of beautiful. I love the use of the limited depth of field, the focus on, on the hands, and what appears to be a, a wide-angle lens in order to include not only uh, the figure of the hands here, but these other figures that are in, in, in the background. You obviously have uh, what looks like another person here and another person along the edges of the frame. And I like the fact that the, that he uses the distortion inherent to this wide-angle lens when used really close to his advantage because it, it creates a level of distortion, of course, but it... Uh, well, Excuse me. It creates a level of distortion, but it also helps to draw the eye into the center of the frame where all this interesting action is uh, happening here. And we have another shot by Matt here, and this, this shot I, I, I love. I mean, this conveys so much in terms of feeling, affection, warmth, trust, uh, in a shot that was made in a, in a, in a subway car. And uh, I've photographed a lot in subways, and, uh, you know, it's my hope that I can make a shot that kind of reveals some of the intimacy that can exist in such a confined space, which is it's where you usually don't expect to see this level of intimacy uh, inside. Everyone's sort of in their bubble, and they're just like, you know, very, very aware of their own personal space in relationship to others. So when you see things like this happen, uh, it makes it makes it a... a makes it a great point of contrast to sort of the sort of stoic um, feeling that most people have 
when they're in a subway getting from point A to point B. It's a wonderful, wonderful capture. and really demonstrates certainly how paying attention to what's happening with hands can really, really be uh, interesting for a photograph. So um, thanks again to all the people who are submitting images. I'm constantly getting people who are adding uh, to the group, and we're getting, uh, we got about 800 members, and uh, we're probably up, be up to a uh, thousand probably within a couple of months and I welcome all the many people who are finding us through the YouTube channel or through the podcast and are submitting images here um, I try to make this as a regular part of my week uh, to go through images and mark favorites and if I have the time to make comments but I really encourage you to do the same uh, it's the, the way we build a community here is not by people simply putting up images and waiting for comments it's by you taking the initiative to comment and tell people what you like or don't like or uh, about the images that they've, they've posted. Be kind, of course, but uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll likely find that you'll get more responses to your work the more you take the initiative to start commenting on other people's work because they'll want to check you out in kind. So, uh, uh, you know, if you haven't already joined the group, please do. You'll find a link in the, in the show notes. And if you are finding us for the first time uh, through these YouTube channels and you know nothing about The Candid Frame, then you should check it out at uh, thecandidframe.com where we, we have a podcast where we feature conversations with the world's best established and emerging photographers. And new episodes are typically released every Sunday and you can access it all for or for free. So, so check it out. So thanks for joining me again and uh, I'll see you next time.